Okay, scarcity exists. Because scarcity exists, we must make choices. Every choice we make has an opportunity cost. So who makes these choices? I want to start today's video by talking about the three economic participants. The three economic participants are consumers, firms, and government. In economics, these three participants make rational choices based on their own incentives. Consumers have an incentive to maximize their utility. Firms have an incentive to maximize their profit. And government has an incentive to maximize the general welfare of its people. The beauty of incentive-driven decision-making means that it is guaranteed that each of these participants will make a decision based on their incentive, making their actions incredibly predictable. You can five-star lock it 100% guarantee that each one will make a decision based on that incentive, no matter what. Let's put that to the test. As a firm, would McDonald's make every item on their new menu twice as healthy for their consumers, even if it meant that their costs would double? Of course not. McDonald's is concerned about profit, and they won't take on greater costs just for the sake of their consumers' health. Sure, they may put healthier items on their menu, but that's really a tactic to bring in moms who are more concerned with healthy choices. Of course, moms drive the minivan through the drive through and they bring their kids along with them. Aha! Mom doesn't just buy the parfait. Mom now has to buy three Happy Meals. That means more profit for McDonald's. The same thing with consumers. We all know rainbow sandals. They look awesome, they're incredibly comfortable, but the big draw about rainbow sandals is that they're incredibly durable. They last forever. So as a consumer, would you continue to pay the market price for a pair of rainbow sandals even if they fell apart only after one month of use? Of course not. You're going to make a decision that meets your needs and wants the best. And you're only going to pay for rainbow sandals at retail price if they last as long as advertised. No dice. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at the incentive-based decision-making of consumers. Consumers have to make decisions because they have needs. A need is a basic requirement for survival without which you cannot live. We're talking food and water. Quite literally, if you go without a need for too long a period of time, you will die. Consumers also have wants. Wants are anything else that you desire that is unnecessary for survival. It doesn't matter how much you want it. If you could go without it and still survive, it is a want and not a need. Consumers are constantly motivated to satisfy all their needs and as many wants as possible. The satisfaction of wants and needs is called utility. So how do consumers maximize their utility? They purchase goods, which are physical objects that satisfy needs and wants, and services, which are actions or activities that satisfy those needs and wants. An example of a good is your iPhone. An example of a service is getting your iPhone checked out at the Apple Store or at the Genius Bar. Either way, goods and services do satisfy fundamental needs and wants of consumers. Together, goods and services can be called economic goods. And economic goods are demanded and purchased by consumers in markets. We'll talk a little bit more about demand and markets in a later lecture. Now let's take a look at the incentive-based decision-making of firms. In seeking to maximize profit, firms need to purchase inputs. Inputs are resources or raw materials used by firms to produce products. In economics, inputs can also be called factors of production. During the production process, firms will take these inputs and make output. Output are the final goods and services produced by firms for profit. They're the economic goods that we just defined. And in economics, we can also call output products. In order to produce output, firms must first take on costs. Costs are the combined wages paid by firms in order to purchase inputs with which they produce economic goods. Once the goods are produced, firms will turn around and supply or sell those products in a market. When they sell those products, they gain revenue. Revenue is the price paid to the firm per units of output sold. Quite literally, it's price times quantity. If you buy two pairs of jeans at $50 each, the firm gains $100 of revenue. When the costs of acquiring raw materials are greater than the revenue gained by the firm, the firm takes losses. However, when revenue is greater than costs, this is when the firm earns profits. So the motivation of firms in the market is to keep costs as low as possible and revenue as high as possible. This can guarantee profit maximization. So how do consumers, firms, and governments go about making their decisions? They will use marginal analysis. Marginal is a word that actually means each additional. When making decisions, the three economic participants consider marginal costs versus marginal benefit. And the marginal benefit for each participant is based on their incentive. For example, the marginal benefit for consumers is marginal utility, or the amount of satisfaction that they will receive from each additional unit consumed. The marginal benefit for firms is marginal revenue or the amount of revenue they will gain with each additional unit sold. The marginal benefit for government is marginal social benefit, or the benefit to the citizenry with each additional unit produced. For each of the three economic participants, the marginal costs of their decisions are economic costs. Economic costs include explicit costs. Explicit costs are easily accounted out-of-pocket costs of any decision. In other words, they're monetary costs. But economic costs also include implicit costs. 
Implicit costs are the opportunity costs or foregone benefits of a decision that are non-monetary. So the decision to consume or produce each additional unit has both explicit and implicit costs that combined are known as economic costs. For consumers, firms, and government, there's a very simple rule when deciding whether or not to consume or produce the next item. With every marginal choice, if the marginal benefit is greater than or equal to the marginal cost, then the choice will be yes. If the marginal cost becomes greater than the marginal benefit, the choice will be no. <laughs> Let's do some practice with each of the three economic participants. Let's first look at consumers. With the information provided in this function, as a consumer, how many cups of Starbucks coffee will you buy? The benefit of the first cup of coffee is $10 in utility to the consumer. The cost of purchasing that cup of coffee is $4. The second cup of coffee has a benefit of $5 in utility, while the cost again is $4. The benefit of the third cup of coffee is $2 in utility, and the cost again is $4. Remember that economic decision-making is about marginal choices, meaning looking at each additional cup of coffee and not the total. When analyzing the marginal benefit and marginal cost of each cup of coffee, the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost by $6, and so the consumer will buy that first cup of coffee. For the second cup of coffee, the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost by $1, and so the consumer will buy a second cup of coffee. But the third cup of coffee has a marginal cost that is greater than the marginal benefit of consuming it. And so as a result, the consumer will not buy the third cup of coffee. In the end, this consumer will only buy two cups of Starbucks coffee. Now let's look at the firm. Based on the information provided in this function, as a firm, how many cars should Honda produce? When breaking down the marginal revenue and marginal cost of each car produced, the first car has a greater marginal revenue than marginal cost to produce. The marginal revenue of the first car is $17,000 more than the marginal cost to produce it. And so Honda will choose to produce that car. They will also choose to produce a second car because again, the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost. The third car will also be produced because the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost. But what about the fourth car? With a marginal revenue of $18,000 to be gained and a marginal cost of $18,000 to produce it, we have marginal revenue equaling marginal cost. Without taking a loss in this situation, Honda will choose to produce that car. While they may not gain, they will not lose and this ensures that they are maximizing profit to the very last penny. The fifth and sixth car has a marginal cost to produce that is greater than the marginal revenue that will be gained, and so Honda will not produce either car. So the answer to this question is that Honda will produce four cars. Lastly, let's take a look at government. Government provides goods that the private market will not provide because there is no profit in providing it. This scenario uses the examples of fire stations. Based on the information provided, as a government, how many fire stations should the city of Yorba Linda build? The first fire station has a greater social benefit than social cost. Each fire station has a marginal social cost in tax revenue that must be spent, but the social benefit to the residents of Yorba Linda in the fire services that would be provided are listed and weighed against that cost. The first fire station has a greater social benefit than social cost, and therefore it will be produced. The second fire station also has a greater social benefit than social cost, and therefore it will be produced. And so does the third, the fourth, and the fifth. The sixth fire station, however, has a smaller social benefit than social cost. In this case, it appears that five fire stations is enough to cover the needs of the citizens of Yorba Linda, and building a sixth fire station would be a misallocation of tax revenue. As a result, the sixth fire station won't be built, and the city of Yorba Linda will build five fire stations. Okay, it's time for a quick review of today's major points. The three economic participants are consumers, firms, and government. Each of these participants will make decisions based on their own economic incentives. The economic incentive of consumers is to maximize utility. The economic incentive of firms is to maximize profit. The economic incentive of government is to maximize the general welfare of its people. Whenever making a decision, these participants will measure marginal cost versus marginal benefit of that decision. Economic costs are explicit out-of-pocket monetary costs plus implicit costs, which is the opportunity cost of that decision. If the marginal benefit is greater or equal to marginal cost, the participant will say yes. If the marginal cost is greater than the marginal benefit, the participant will say no. That's it for today's lecture. I'll see you next time on Intro to Macro.